So for you all who didn't know, there are levels that come with down low men. So as I've been doing my research, I came across a study that says black men are 13 times more likely to hide their sexuality than any other men in the country. I'm still doing my research on it because I think I'll do a video on it. So I haven't posted the article yet, but you guys will see it soon. I just think it's so ironic that the most homophobic group of men have the highest population of down low men, right? Now, in this article, it also stated that the majority of down low men are not married and are not boyfriends, are not in relationships with women. The majority, although it does happen, some do get married, some are in long term relationships with women. The majority of down low men are single men who may be exploring women romantically and emotionally, but just pursuing men for sex. And they're just not honest about it. So I guess the question one must ask is, if a man knows that he's sexually attracted to men, he knows that he is not attracted to women, and he knows his desire is to be with another man, why would he marry a woman? Well, he would marry her to use her as a beard, of course. What is a beard? A beard is a person who is used knowingly or unknowingly as a date or cover up to hide or conceal one's sexual orientation. And a beard is exactly what Terry McMillan was. Terry McMillan is an American novelist. Her work centers around the experiences of black women in the United States of America. She is also a New York Times bestselling author. She wrote books such as How Stella Got Her Groove Back, Waiting to Excel, A Day Late and a Dollar Short, plus many more. And what's actually ironic is Terry McMillan's down low husband was the inspiration for Stella Got Her Groove Back. So Terry McMillan and Jonathan Plummer met on her vacation to Jamaica in 1995. At the time, she was 42 years old and he was 20. Jonathan was living in Jamaica at the time. When they met, he says he did not know who Terry McMillan was. He says in Jamaica, they did not celebrate authors, so she was not popular in Jamaica. She does admit that she approached him first. Based off how they explained that it was love at first sight, she asked him to move in with her to California months later. Um, they ended up getting married three years later. They were married for about seven to eight years. He says that he was faithful six and a half years of the marriage. He confessed to her that he was gay about five and a half years into the marriage. Terry McMillan was devastated and heartbroken when her husband of five and a half years revealed to her that he was indeed homosexual. And she did apply for a divorce a few months later. She claims that she believes he used her for money and American citizenship. And to be a beard, of course. Jonathan stands by his claims that he loved her and he was in love with her when he married her. He did not know that he was homosexual at the time. Here's the thing. Jonathan Plummer, that was a lie. This man always knew that he was gay. This was a single man when you approached him. I think at the time, he believed that you guys were just going to have a fling. Y'all were just having a little bit of fun. You were just in town. He did not expect the relationship to get as serious as it was. Because you have to understand, some down low men are attracted to women. They could be bisexual. They could just be trisexual. They could just be sexual. They just want to have sex. In my opinion, I would never blame a woman for being with a down low man. But at some point, I do feel like certain women have to take accountability. When I look at Jonathan Plummer, he is a very feminine presenting man he has very feminine mannerisms and i hate to judge another gay man because now he is an openly gay man but this was not i could see if he was a p diddy or an idris elbow or he was some type of masculine figure where it was hard for you to tell because he hit it very well it seems like he always had these same mannerisms he's very feminine pretty looking he just and maybe at the time they were celebrating men like Prince and Michael Jackson, the kind of metrosexual or androgynous looking men. But just by the way this man talked, I just don't believe that this woman did not have any clue. Now, in his interview with Oprah Winfrey, he does tell Oprah that he always had thoughts and attractions and feelings for other men, but he just never acted on them. And that is 
some down women too. I have met men who say that they've always been attracted to men or maybe transgender women, but they've never acted upon it. And for some reason, a lot of men think as long as they don't act upon it, that they're not gay. But little do they know and they don't understand that those feelings never go away. Those urges never go away. So as they get older, it just gets worse and harder to deal with. And I feel like that's why you have 50 and 60 year old men just coming out the closet. Because at some point it just gets unbearable. Now, my opinion on him not exploring and experiencing anything with a man until he got to America, I don't believe that at all. I think he was having sex with men when he was inside of Jamaica as well. But here's what I will tell you. American black men are, from what I've seen, the most attractive black men that you will ever see. We got the mans over here. So it's not hard for me to believe that he got over here and he was not able to suppress those feelings much longer. Especially if she took him to California where they have some of the most beautiful black men in the country. And on any given day, men from all across the United States could be in California just vacationing, working, whatever. Traveling through. So I can believe that he may have not had sex with a man until he got to the U.S. It is possible and I don't want to discredit his story. Now, he did admit to having a gay dating app on his phone, but he says the gay dating app was just to browse. I'm just going to be honest with any woman. If you ever catch a gay dating app on your man's phone, he is gay. At the point in which a man downloads a gay dating app, he has accepted the fact that he is attracted to men or transgender women. There's no other reason a man would be on that app if he hasn't accepted the fact that he's attracted to something on that app. He just wouldn't be there. So, this was a man... Oh, I feel like once he got to know this woman, he saw her as a come up. Could he have developed genuine organic feelings for this woman? Yes. But was this woman his beard? Absolutely. Now, all the using her for citizenship, I don't know about that. The only thing I can really say to this story is for women to not be so oblivious to certain signs and mannerisms that a man may have. I know we don't want to be judgmental a lot of times and we will look past certain feminine mannerisms and just say that's how he was raised. But I do personally believe as an openly gay man who is perceived as feminine, there are certain mannerisms that come with gay men that the average heterosexual man just doesn't have. Me working around straight men, me having brothers, uncles, there is a certain way that I carry in my mannerisms that I just don't see heterosexual men doing. Jonathan Plummer, to me, was just very feminine in his manner. Like It just would not be hard for the average person to know that this was a gay man, you know? My heart goes out to Terry McMillan. I think that a man that will marry a woman knowing that he's not attracted to her, knowing that that's not what he wants and where he wants to be, I think these are the worst type of DL men. I think if a downward man does decide to marry a woman or be in a long-term relationship with a woman, then he should not be able to come to the LGBT community for sex. I think he should have to stay where he lays. So you want to get all the benefits that come with being a heterosexual man. You want to get all the benefits of the patriarchy. You want to get all the benefits of being married with a wife and a kid. And the straight male privilege. But you also get the benefit of coming to the LGBTQ community to get your rocks off and have your sex. So you can go home to your wife and your kids and pretend that you're a family. Girl, leave it alone. Now, single DL men, men who are just exploring the world. Men who just want to have sex, they ain't really dating nobody. Those are the download men, I would say. If you want to entertain download men, they should be single men who may just be having sex with whoever, who may not be in a serious relationship. Any man that's in a long-term relationship with a woman, if he's engaged, if he decides to get married, if he lives with his big... <laughs> we'll keep that to ourselves. Those men should be off limits. That's just how I feel. The same way you wouldn't want an openly gay man who has a boyfriend or a long-term thing going on. Why would you want it from a down low man now i do have to give him his props and i do have a certain level of respect for him because he did come out to his wife and he did allow her to move on a lot of these men will stay in these relationships forever lying to these women and wasting women's time so i do respect jonathan Plummer for that but this is not the first story we'll be doing on the down low husband i got some more down low husband stories coming out and you guys are going to be shocked so just let me know what you thought about Terry McMillan and Jonathan Plummer. Did you see the Oprah interview when it aired years ago? I was very young, so I didn't know about it. Um, Do you know anyone who has a download husband? Have you experienced a woman with a download husband? Wait, one more thing I wanted to touch on. She said that when they would go out in public, men would always be looking at her husband, and she would always tell him. And she liked the attention that 
men would give her husband. So I guess my question is, was it openly gay men looking at your husband? Or were y'all like a couple of dates and these were heterosexual men looking at your husband? Like what type of men were looking at your husband? I think that's important to know as well. That's all I got for Terry McMillan and Jonathan Plummer, guys. See you next time.